Well, we're back here at Blue Flame. Dave and the guys were silly enough to throw me the keys to their workshop. We're filming another epic little video. Now, this is one you guys have been asking for. This is a full, in-depth, in detail, Naughty 40 walkthrough. We're going to be touching on bar work, suspension, engine interior, the chop, the tray, the canopy, the 12 volt, absolutely everything. It's going to touch all bases, the ins and outs, and all the nitty gritty. But before we do anything, I need one thing from you guys. I need you guys to go down below and hit that subscribe button. And if you're feeling fruity, hit the notification bell and even drop me a like so I can keep making sick videos for you guys. But it's enough of this. Let's get stuck in. Let's start off with the bar work. Now, this little bull bar here has been quite controversial. Lots of people have said, put hoops on it, you silly billy. Other people have said it looks ugly. Uh, you know what I think? Well, I like it, so I don't really care. This was made by Brutal Bars and Fabrication, a mob up in Queensland. Um, it's a replica, I guess, if you like, of a uh, bull bar that Kinsella Customs made a few years ago that was on Mikey's rig. A lot of you probably know it and probably think, looks a lot similar well, that's because it basically is now mounted to it we've got a steady st3303 pro light bar 11 inch more than enough light for the kind of driving i do it's absolutely fantastic below that we've got the rumba 11 xp premium 12 volt winch synthetic rope dyneema this is a uh well i guess it's like a comp comp winch high mount winch crane hook that kind of thing um just to change it up a bit, no one likes little winch hooks. It's annoying to put a strap on it, so a big one of those makes a big difference. We've also got the GME 6.6 .6 DBI UHF aerial, which goes to the XRS Connect in the car. Talking sliders, we've just got a uh, custom set of sliders made by Ausbuilt 4x4, the same company that did the ute conversion. Now, they are a custom length, obviously, to suit the space cab chop we did, or the extra cab chop, um, and they are absolutely sick. They suit the car perfectly. And up the back, being a ute, there's no rear bar per se, but we do have a weld-in rear cross member that incorporates a tow, uh, a tow hitch or a recovery hitch. So that pretty much sums up the bar work. I would love to get some scrubbies and a little bit of a rear hoop going on to cover those um, rear toolboxes, but for now, that's what we have. I reckon we open the bonnet and we talk about engine while we're up the front. So, this is where the party is in here. So, what's the car, I guess, is probably a good thing to answer. Yeah, it's a 11th month 92 Toyota Land Cruiser 80 Series HDJ, um, which means it's got this motor in it. This is the factory turbo diesel 1HDT motor. It's a 4.2 litre straight six, and uh, as a stock standard unit, they leave a lot to be desired, which is why I've done what I did. So I guess motor-wise, there's not a lot that hasn't been touched. It's got a Safari intercooler front mount, um, which helps keep everything cool. It's got an ADS injection, 200 horsepower, 12 mil fuel pump. The motor itself has been fully rebuilt with all Toyota internals. So it's also got ARP head studs in there. And why do we have those? Well, because we're running a fair bit of boost. It's got a G-Turbo Grunner Extreme turbo fitted, which has got about 27 PSI boost up its bottom so it really does get up and boogie so other supporting mods that help everything along is the radius fabrication four inch air box which of course goes into the uh, four inch radius fabrication stainless steel snorkel um, other bits and pieces are it's got a clutch industries four terrain thousand newton meter clutch kit in there which keeps everything uh, all the power down which is fantastic it's also got a high flow thermostat and all the usual fruit it's also got a Manta 3-inch custom exhaust down there, which helps this thing boogie along and stay nice and cool. Um, over in the other corner of the engine bay, there's things like the uh, ARB air compressor for the lockers, diff breathers, all the essentials, and obviously you can see the dual batteries here, and it's a third battery in the back of the car as well. So the front of the car, the front suspension, there's a fair bit going on, and uh, it's all for a very good reason. That is for practicality and capability off-road. So... The front suspension is pretty exciting. We'll start off with the main thing, which is the diff. It's been fully braced by Matt Kinsella at Kinsella Customs. I'm talking uh, the top half of the diff has all been braced as well as both sides of each knuckle, uh, which is pretty important. And while he was doing that, we also did the radius arm flip, 
So that uses their custom-made laser cut radius arms, flips them to the top side of the diff, and means that the radius arm angle is a lot more flat and parallel to the ground than what it normally would be when you're running a big lift, which is fantastic. Other things up the front here, uh, extended front bump stops, obviously for those 37 inch tires. We've got things like custom made Bilstein Australia B60 shock absorbers. The fronts are a 10 inch long shock and they're a 2.5 inch body, hence the B60, 60 millimeters. Um, we've also got a prototype fulcrum suspensions front steering dampener. And uh, we've also got a ramp customs alloy heim jointed comp spec front adjustable pan hard rod in there too, to help keep everything straighty 180. Coming around to the side of the car, we're gonna talk wheels and tires. This is another very controversial topic that you guys love to talk about. So let's talk about it. Wheels are a dirty life roadkill. Now these are a 17 inch by nine inch, negative 38 offset. They're a full true alloy beadlock. We just had them here fitted at Blue Flame Automotive and they're looking absolutely a million bucks. Wrapped on those are a tyre that you would have seen in a few of our previous videos. These are the Maxus Trepidor. They're in a 37 inch by 12.5 R17 size. They're the bias compound, which means they are sticky as all hell. They're basically a competition tyre and they absolutely set this truck off. They're amazing off-road. I have not a single bad thing to say about them. We've also got the AVM part-time kit uh, installed, which means when I'm putting around the road, it's rear wheel drive. When I get to the tracks, I lock the hubs, hit a button inside and we've got four wheel drive. And in here you can see the springs. It's a four inch lift all around in terms of springs. The rear's a three inch, just to help the car sit level. Um, and also under here, it's gonna be hard to show you guys, but we've also got the steady RGB rock lights, which are mounted up in the wheel wells, under the sliders, under the ball bar, in the rear arches, which are obviously those rainbow colored party lights that we all love to post on Instagram. So having a look at the side of the car, you can probably see there's one big change uh, from a lot of photos and that kind of thing you would have seen on the internet already, and that is the ute chop. Now this was carried out by Justin and the team at Osbilt 4x4 in Canberra, and they did a fantastic job. We fixed a bit of rust, we played it in some holes, we did the ute conversion to what is effectively a space cab, um, and we also got a full respray. Obviously you can't see that it's wrapped, but underneath the wrap is gorgeous, gorgeous paint, which is fantastic. Now, the guys did this in a ridiculous time frame. We went from a wagon to a finished ute in around a month. So it really was no easy feat and it's turned out a million bucks. Um, the team at Auto Artisan are responsible for this wrap creation. It looks fantastic. Obviously, Sparesbox, who I work for and who have supported me from day one. Uh, and they even tinted the windows while it was in any wrap. So the whole look has come together with this wrap. It's sort of what I'd always envisioned, this dark black on black, bits of greys and occasional pops of colour, and I reckon it looks pretty trick. Up the back is a Mitz alloy canopy and tray, which I'll touch on shortly, but I reckon while you're here, we should have a look inside. So, welcome to my office. This is where I spend an awful lot of time traveling up and down the east coast, doing bits and bobs, daily driving, the works. So I obviously had to make it a fairly comfortable space to be in, practical, and uh, also just generally user friendly. So we've got a fair bit going on in here and I'm gonna try and remember everything we've done. So starting behind me, because I know I'm gonna forget it, is uh, the one stone armrests. These are for a 76, 79 that I modified to fit. These make a huge difference when you're doing those long drives. Um, other things I've done are the uh, VHEX Commodore door cards actually, so that you can fit front speakers. Uh, and also I keep all my shackles, my tire deflator and that kind of thing down there. Now this thing I'm leaning on here is obviously not a Land Cruiser seat, is it? This is an XR Falcon seat. Um, compared to the standard seats that come in an 80 series, these are pretty good. They've got adjustable bolster support. They uh, hug you a fair bit better and they are much more comfortable. I've got a set of uh, Razorback seat covers coming as well, which I'm super excited about. They're neoprene seat covers that are going to help keep these protected and also totally waterproof. Technology-wise, this car has got a lot crammed into it. For a 30-year-old car, there's a fair bit going on. Starting off the team at uh, Power Vision Sound, PVS Automotive, hooked me up with their 200 series uh, graphite limited edition steering wheel, which is fantastic. Uh, and they've also given me their rear vision uh, computer system, which is fantastic. It's a little Android unit. It's got a reverse camera, a dash camera. You can run maps, uh, YouTube, internet, all that stuff off it, which is fantastic. Because obviously, since we chopped it into a ute, 
the uh, factory rear camera is, well, it's as good as useless. In terms of gauges and other interior technology, uh, in this region over here, we've got a couple of automated gauges in a 4x4 Concepts pillar pod. Um, we've just got EGT and Boost so that I can keep an eye on everything. We've also got a wireless tyre pressure monitoring system by DriveTech 4x4. Uh, we've got the Sunland dash mat, which I love. When you're doing dusty four-wheel driving, it just helps keep the dust and the glare off, which is fantastic. Jumping down here, we've got a whole raft of steady rocker switches, which are for all the auxiliary lights and that kind of thing fed to the outside of the vehicle. We've got the XRS 370 Connect UHF, which is fantastic. All the controls are right here in your hand, made in Australia. They've been longtime supporters of Spares Box and myself, which is absolutely fantastic. And we've also uh, converted the factory single DIN uh, to a really nice Pioneer double DIN unit, which has got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that kind of stuff, which is really fantastic. Bluetooth functionality, all the good gear. Coming over here, we've obviously got the Dometic CF11 center console fridge freezer. It is a true compressor-driven fridge freezer, which means I can set this down to minus 15 if I want. And I have in the past taken ice cubes, ice box to redhead beach in this little guy. It keeps everything frozen, which is fantastic. Other bits and pieces are obviously masks, important, COVID. Always take your mask everywhere. Down here, we've got switches for other bits and pieces, the rock lights, the compressor for the lockers, and also front and rear. Uh, locker switches there to keep everything Mickey Mouse. I also use a quad lock, it's worth noting. I love my quad lock phone case and holder. I've got it on the motorbike, I've got it in the 80. Absolutely fantastic. And other than that in here, that's pretty well simple. Uh, the interior, the back wall, I'm gonna be honest, it's not perfect and that's because when we chopped the car, I basically ran out of time and I had to uh, skin the rear wall myself. So uh, that is how it is for now. It's got a rear window, which I really like, but I will be looking to get that reupholstered soon. But other than that in here, it's pretty, pretty, you know, as Toyota had, I put the speakers in, the sound system goes well, and behind these seats there's a little bit of space. We did the king cab or the space cab, I guess you'd say, uh, because single cab, it just doesn't quite look right for me. I wanted a little bit of space behind this uh, B pillar, and it also means I can keep things like beach towels, a bag of clothes, bits and bobs, that kind of thing. I've got an ARB twin compressor coming that I'm gonna be mounting behind the passenger seat one. Uh, and with the XR Falcon seats, they actually fold forward and slide forward. So access is a breeze. Talking of uh, attractive 12 volt and goodies inside, I reckon we go have a look at the tray canopy and have a look inside the canopy. Obviously an 80 series is a wagon, normally with seven seats. And this one here is not a wagon and it only has two seats. And that's because we turned it into a ute. And what do you get when you have a ute? Well, you need a tray and a canopy if you're gonna live out of it and you're gonna wheel it. So that's what we have here. This one is a full alloy setup by the team at Mitz Alloy up in Newcastle. Again, long-time supporters of both Sparesbox, Full Drive 24-7 and myself. Very generous, the team up there, and they have put together this fantastic creation that uh, is a little bit different to a lot of single cab utes that you'll see out there. And that's probably most obvious is the space, the length of this thing. I always wanted a short, short setup. When I did this chop, I wanted it to be short, aggressive, I wanted maximum departure angle. And uh, when we put the 37s on, while it was getting chopped, we even bobbed the chassis, which is worth mentioning. We took 360 millimeters out of the rear of the chassis. We did sacrifice the sub tank in doing that, but it was a sacrifice I was willing to make. It was only a 40 or a 45 liter tank, which is uh, a compromise given that I've got the two 40 liter jerry cans uh, on the back. Um, which really doesn't bother me. Having to get out, chuck a jerry can in the main fuel tank, I'm not too phased. Now this is all Australian made, lifetime warranty. Mips do an absolutely fantastic job. Um, we got them to make the tray 1400 long, which de uh, ends dead in line with the back of the chassis. The canopy is 1200. We've obviously got a full size trep spare mounted in the center and two jerrys either side. We've got the steady work lights up on the top of the canopy and also at the back side of the uh, tray there as reversing lights. And in here, or in here is where it gets really exciting. So this is my home away from home. And I say that because it's got pretty much all the luxuries that a house would have. So this is the Dometic CRX 80 fridge freezer. It's a fantastic thing, 80 litre capacity. It's got a little freezer compartment in the top of it. It gets really cold really quick and it's this perfect size for me whether it's an overnight trip or a week away where you're not restocking, I'm able to fit everything I need in there. Up the top, we've got the kick-ass 12 volt travel oven, which is fantastic. Gets up to 180 degrees, which means roadside meat pies, sausage rolls, roasts, reheating last night's leftovers, all that goodness is as easy as turning that dial on 
which is again fantastic. And the best part is all this gear is mounted up in this Mitz canopy, which is extremely modular and very sturdy. Over this side as well, we've got this little compartment, which is simply a, uh, a pantry. So I use this for food, jet boil, wet wipes, all that kind of thing. And then coming out the bottom is a little prep table. So you can cook all your meals here, you can set up your jet boil, do your morning coffee, all that business, which is really fantastic. Now the interior fit out of this car was looked after by Red Arc and the team at Amped Automotive. Now their 12 volt setup in this is pretty well unparalleled with a lot of other cars out there. It has got just about every piece of fruit you can imagine, including the full Red Arc Red Vision system, the Manager 30. We've also got a 150 watt Red Arc rigid monocrystalline solar panel on the roof and a stack of power outlets over the other side which I'll tell you about. So over this side is less so living, more so storage. We've got this big slide out uh, drawer, which I keep all my cooking gear, all my living stuff, cleaning, uh, tent pegs, a couple of tools, bog roll, paper towel, all that good stuff. Uh, it keeps it nice and tidy and organized. I also utilize the Drifter uh, Australian made clear top canvas bags in all the drawers in this car. It just helps keep everything organized. You can see where it all is protected, less rattles, that's what I'm after. That's what I want. Um, you can obviously see up the top here, we've got all the Red Arc fruit you could ever want. It was all wired and installed by the guys at Amped Automotive. Um, the 12 volt in this car, I've got a 2000 watt inverter. I've got the Manager 30. I've got solar. I've got all the fruit you can imagine. I've got the road, uh, the road power switch panel. I've got just about everything, guys, in terms of the 12 volt. The best part is that I love about this is this cable here. I can just pull out of this little nook and plug that straight into a power point at home if I'm going to park the car up or if I know I'm not going to be driving it for a week or more, I can plug that in and it's going to keep all my batteries topped up and charged. Talking about batteries, how many do I have and where are they? You saw the two under the bonnet before. One was a cranking battery, one was an auxiliary battery and that battery is linked up to one that's behind uh, the fridge in this car. So I've got 270 amp hours of AGM battery on this vehicle. One in the canopy, one in the front and it's all controlled by that uh, Manager 30 with the Red Vision screen. It's all controlled, it's all charged, it's got solar. It really is a sweet setup. I haven't found I need any more power and I've never run out of power. So it really is the perfect setup for me and all the gear I do. I've also got things like the Nava fuse panel, all these Nava lights and all that kind of gear. The Nava uh, USB switches and that kind of thing throughout the car too. Because Nava is again, a very top quality product. I reckon while we're over this side, we should have a look at what's going on the rear suspension. Before we quickly talk about that rear suspension, I thought I would just mention the back of the car. So obviously the two jerry cans to make up for the uh, lack of sub tank. And I've opted for a full blown spare setup. I'm talking a beadlock spare. I'm talking a 37 inch trap. Why? Well, because why not? Also with the mitts tray, one of my other favorite features about it is this trundle drawer, which means I can keep all my large, bulky, heavy, dirty items out of the inside of the canopy. I've got all my spare parts, tools, ratchet straps, sprays, oils, filters, all that kind of stuff kept in here. They have this lift up top, which is fantastic, which means you can put things like a Weber on here, a cooktop and that kind of thing. And it really just maximizes your bench space. It also has a drop in divider, which means you have a wind deflector. So if you're cooking in windy environments, that kind of thing, you can whip that out and you're not gonna have that much of a drama. Down here, we've also got more of the steady work lights and that kind of thing, which are fantastic. They can uh, all be switched from either inside the canopy or inside the cab of the car, which is great. Uh, it makes a huge difference when you just want to back up in a nighttime campsite, when you're wheeling those tough tracks at night and you can't quite see what's going on behind you. It really does make a difference. And then up in that top left corner, well, that's the PVS Automotive reverse camera. So that means super wide, super wide angle of vision, which means I can see everything that's going on behind me and that it all goes through to that rear view camera computer system. So I can see what's going on, which is a big thing that a lot of dual cabin, single cab owners don't have the luxury of doing. So I highly recommend that. I reckon let's talk about the suspension. So now we're looking at the rear suspension, which is fairly similar to the front. Uh, we've got those three inch coils. Again, the front's four inch. It helps the car sit level, which is what I'm after. We're still running a rear sway bar, which is important to note with the Superior Engineering Extended Sway Bar extensions. Um, the front is not currently running a, uh, a sway bar. I find it just helps the car a little bit off-road. 
I haven't found it too unstable, daily driving and that kind of thing, so it's probably going to stay that way. In terms of uh, control arms and that kind of thing, trailing arms, we've got adjustable uppers and we've got plus 11 extended uh, or longer lower arms, which uh, helps push that diff back and get it back into a nice factory position when you do lift them high, that is the downside. Uh, again, those three inch coils are held in place by a superior engineering coil retainer. Um, and that is needed because we're running, again, those custom Bilstein B60 shock absorbers. In the back, they're 12 inches long and, again, 2.5 inch body. And at full articulation, the spring does become loose. So those coil retainers help keep everything in, uh, in order. We've also got extended brake lines front and rear. We've got extended brake proportioning valves, um, which, again, is all stuff you need for this size lift. I haven't had to run a uh, tail shaft spacer, which is important to note as well. I've never had a problem with it. Uh, and this car has been at this height for a little over three years now. Um, another thing to note while I'm down here and talking about driveline is I'm still running the factory diff gears, which is 411 ratio, which on 37s is a little bit sluggish. I'm probably going to be looking to change to a 456 diff ratio just to help it off road and help it get around and get up and boogie on the road. Um, and the other thing that I'll mention is while I'm down here is to help it off road with those 37s and just to help it off road in general, the team here at Blue Flame Automotive fitted a set of Mark's four wheel drive reduction gears, uh, which have helped really slow the crawl speed of this car down. Being a manual and that kind of thing, it, uh, that's absolutely transformed how it goes off road. So the last thing to mention is bigger tires, heavier wheels, more power, you need to stop better. So we've upgraded the braking system of this car. Uh, it's got a full Disc Brakes Australia DBA setup. I'm talking the heavy duty T3 slotted vented rotors, as well as the DBA XP Extreme Performance brake pads, which have been used in street cars and race cars alike. So in terms of braking, this thing stops pretty well and it'll even lock up 37s on the road, which is pretty impressive. Now, guys, that's pretty much a full walkthrough of this vehicle. If you have any other questions, if I've missed anything, anything that you want to talk about, leave a comment below and I'll try my best to get back to you. If you've loved what you've seen, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, smash that like button, check me out on Instagram, do all those good things. I'm hoping you're going to see a hell of a lot more of this vehicle. We're going to be getting out on some trips with some very cool rigs very soon. And I've got a stack of content planned for this year. It's going to be extremely exciting. Thanks again to the team at Blue Flame for giving me the keys to their workshop and letting us occupy their car park. For now, that's it, guys. See you next time. So, 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 so. So, 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 so,